We are handing down our judgments in these appeals this morning. I shall read a summary which does not form part of the judgment. The appellants in these cases are ten individual asylum seekers and one charity, Asylum Aid. The individual appellants are from Syria, Iraq, Iran, Vietnam, Sudan and Albania. They arrived in the United Kingdom irregularly by crossing the English Channel from France in small boats. In the cases of each of the appellants, the government made a decision in late May or early June 2022 not to consider their asylum claims, but to remove them to Rwanda, where their claims would be decided under the Rwandan asylum system. Those decisions were made in accordance with arrangements between the two governments announced on the 14th of April 2022 and contained in a memorandum of understanding and a number of diplomatic notes for Baal. Uh, they comprised the Rwanda Agreement. On the basis of the assurances from the Rwandan government contained in the terms of the Rwanda Agreement, its terms more broadly, monitoring arrangements in place and other inquiries carried out by the United Kingdom government, Rwanda was treated as a safe third country under the relevant provisions of the immigration rules. Uh, this is the Rwanda policy. The appellants and other claimants brought proceedings in the High Court challenging both the lawfulness of the Rwanda policy generally, referred to as the generic challenge, and the government's decisions specifically to remove each of them to Rwanda. Removals did not go ahead pending the outcome of these proceedings. The central issue before the High Court and before us was whether the asylum system in Rwanda was capable of delivering reliable outcomes. The appellant's case is that there are substantial grounds for believing that there is a real risk that any person sent to Rwanda will be removed to their home country when, in fact, they have a good claim for asylum. Sending them to Rwanda in those circumstances would breach Article 3 of the European Convention on Human Rights. In that sense, the appellants submitted that Rwanda is not a safe third country. Uh, the High Court, Lord Justice Lewis and Mr Justice Swift, heard those challenges in September and October 2022. Its decision was handed down on the 19th of December 2022. In the case of the individual claimants, the decisions to remove them were quashed on the basis of procedural unfairness in their particular cases. But the court dismissed the generic challenges to the Rwanda policy. The appeals to this court are against the High Court's decision on the generic challenges. The government has not appealed against the quashing of the decisions in the appellant's individual cases and has not yet made any fresh decisions in those or other cases pending the outcome of the appeals. The appeals were argued before us over four days between the 24th and the 27th of April 2023. The grounds were numerous and included other legal issues besides the question whether Rwanda was a safe third country in the sense we have described. The court had to consider a great deal of detailed evidence as well as other materials. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees was permitted to make submissions as an interested party and evidence filed on behalf of the UNHCR formed the foundation of much of the appellant's case. By a majority, this court allows the appeal on the issue of whether Rwanda is a safe third country. It unanimously dismisses the other grounds. There is a subsidiary question about whether there are substantial grounds for believing that persons sent to Rwanda will face a real risk of treatment contrary to Article 3 in Rwanda itself. Although we do not all take the same view on that subsidiary question, the decision of the High Court is undisturbed on that point. I will now give a very brief summary of the Court of Appeal's reasons. Uh, to understand the detail, it is necessary to read the judgments, which will be made available in court and online as soon as I have delivered this summary. 
the decision of the majority, the master of the roles, Sir Geoffrey Voss, and Lord Justice Underhill, the Vice President of the Court of Appeals Civil Division, is that the deficiencies in the asylum system in Rwanda are such that there are substantial grounds for believing that there is a real risk that persons sent to Rwanda will be returned to their home countries where they face persecution or other inhumane treatment when, in fact, they have a good claim for asylum. In that sense, Rwanda is not a safe third country. That conclusion is founded on the evidence which was before the High Court that Rwanda's system for deciding asylum claims was, in the period up to the conclusion of the Rwanda Agreement, inadequate. The Court is unanimous in accepting that the assurances given by the Rwandan government were made in good faith and were intended to address any defects in the asylum process. However, the majority believes that the evidence does not establish that the necessary changes had by then been reliably effected or would have been at the time of the proposed removals. In consequence, sending anyone to Rwanda would constitute a breach of Article 3 of the European Convention on Human Rights, which Parliament has required the government uh, to comply with. In agreement with the High Court, I have reached the opposite conclusion. I agree that the procedures put in place under the Rwandan agreement and the assurances given by the Rwandan government are sufficient to ensure that there is no real risk that asylum seekers relocated under the Rwanda policy will be wrongly returned to countries where they fa face persecution or other inhumane treatment. I have concluded that the chances of failed asylum seekers being returned to their countries of origin are in any event low, not least because Rwanda has no agreements in place with any of the countries in question. In addition, extensive monitoring arrangements, formal and informal, of all those sent to Rwanda and of their asylum claims once there, provide powerful protection. I take the view that the arrangements put in place provide sufficient safeguards in a context where both governments will be determined to make the agreement work and be seen to do so. As for the grounds on which the appellants have been unsuccessful, I can summarise our reasoning as follows. Uh, one, the effect of the Refugee Convention. Article 31 of the Refugee Convention does not, in principle, prevent the United Kingdom from removing asylum seekers to a safe third country. Two, retained EU law. EU law only permits asylum seekers to be removed to a safe third country if they have some connection to that country. None of the appellants has any connection to Rwanda. However, the court holds that the, uh, that, that requirement has ceased to be part of United Kingdom law as a result of the provisions of the Immigration and Social Security Cooperation EU Withdrawal Act 2020, which is part of the legislation dealing with the consequences of the UK's withdrawal from the European Union. Three, designation as a safe third country. Uh, Schedule 3 to the Asylum and Immigration Treatment of Claimants Act 2004 allows the government, as long as it obtains parliamentary approval, to designate particular countries as safe. The government did not, in these cases, make use of those procedures. Instead, it proceeded by giving guidance to caseworkers for uh, application in individual decision. Uh, the court holds that it was not unlawful for it to proceed in that way. Uh, four, data protection. Decisions to remove individuals to Rwanda are not themselves invalidated by any breaches of the data protection legislation which it is alleged would or might occur in the course or in consequence of their removal. Five, fairness of procedures. Asylum aid submitted that the procedures by which the government decided whether to relocate individual asylum seekers to Rwanda were inherently unfair, in particular because of the short timetable applying to representations seeking to resist removal. The court rejects that submission, but it holds that some aspects of the High Court's reasoning cannot be supported and that the government needs to give guidance to caseworkers emphasising 
the importance of flexibility in granting extensions to the time limits where fairness requires. The result is that the High Court's decision that Rwanda was a safe third country is reversed and that unless and until the deficiencies in its asylum processes are corrected, removal of asylum seekers to Rwanda will be unlawful. Finally, I should make clear that our decision implies no view whatever about the political merits or otherwise of the Rwanda policy. Those are entirely a matter for the government, on which the court has nothing to say. Our concern is only whether the policy complies with the law as laid down by Parliament. A, a deliberately tight timetable has been set for consequential orders and directions, partly so that any application for permission to appeal can be decided promptly. Uh, the court hopes and expects that it will be able to deal with all consequential matters on the papers. For the avoidance of doubt, our judgments are published with immediate effect, albeit on a subject to editorial corrections basis, in accordance uh, with uh, Direction 1, which I shall shortly mention. If any corrections are necessary, a revised version will in due course be sent to the parties and published on the Judiciary website and on the National Archives website. We will give the following directions for the steps that the parties need to take consequential on our decision. We direct that by 4 p.m. on Thursday the 6th of July 2023, 1. The parties file with the court lists of suggestions for correction of typographical or other minor errors in the judgments now handed down. Two, the parties file with the court draft orders in each of the appeals, so far as possible in agreed terms, uh, giving effect to the terms of our judgments and covering all consequential matters such as costs and permission to appeal to the Supreme Court. Three, Insofar as the terms of the orders cannot be agreed, short written submissions from the parties on the disputed items can be filed. In the case of any application for permission to appeal to the Supreme Court, submissions are required only from the um, uh, applicant. Submissions from the respondent will be required only if the court asks for them. That timetable is deliberately tight partly so that any application for permission to appeal to the Supreme Court can be decided promptly, uh, but we believe it is achievable. Any application for an extension will be entertained only for the most cogent reasons and should relate only to particular aspects of the orders in relation to which it is said that the timetable cannot be complied with. Uh, thank you. Uh, that concludes this morning's proceedings.